The idea of this video is to get you up and running as quickly as possible so you can record audio and MIDI in Samplitude. So Samplitude is open and we have the start wizard and I'm going to click on new multi-track project VIP. So I will select custom 16 tracks. The project will be 5 minutes long and I'll leave the sample rate at 44.1. At the top here I can name the track getting started. Next I'm going to set the file path for this project. So I'll navigate to my Seagate 500. I have a folder created already called getting started so I'll save it in the Samplitude folder there. You can also choose to create a new project subdirectory but I won't be needing that. Now I'm going to click on project options. Here we can define the settings for our project. The snap is already set to bars and beats and from the drop down list you can also set the snap resolution. I'm going to leave it set to full bar and also the grid can stay at bars and beats. That's good. Also auto save mode is active so a backup file will be saved every 10 minutes. Default BPM is 120. I think I'm going to change that to 130. That should do. So click OK on the project options to close that and click OK on the setup. So now we have a 16 track project using the default Samplitude skin. The next thing to do is to press Y to open the system options and I'm going to check the audio system setup. Make sure ACO is selected as the driver and depending on what sound card you are using you can select it from the drop down list under ACO device. ACO buffer is set to 512 so I'm going to click on the control panel. There it is. Now I'm going to lower the buffer to 256 which will give me a faster response. That should be okay. Make sure you have the monitoring set up to the far right which is the hybrid engine. This will give you low latency monitoring for the mixer and also for processing your live input as well. Tape monitoring is enabled and mix input and playback. I normally select that. Next I will select audio devices. Here you can enable the audio inputs so select the ones you need. This makes them available as inputs in the audio section of the track editor. In my case I only have the four inputs. I only need to enable outputs one and two. Although in some cases you may need to enable more outputs for headphone mixes. The amount of inputs and outputs available will depend on what sound card you're using. Now I'm selecting the MIDI tab. You can select your global MIDI record device here. I have disabled that pesky Microsoft GS Wavetable synth and made the Firewire Audio File MIDI the global play device. The MIDI sync velocity is normally set to 50% so I usually change it to 100%. Now I'm going to move down to the effects tab. VST Direct X Rewire. We need to set the VST plugin path. This is very important so click on the folder icon then select browse VST folder. In my case it's drive C, program files, magics, samplitude, 10 pro VST plugins. You can activate rewire here if you need to. So when you click OK, you'll notice that Samplitude scans the VST plugin folder for your plugins. You can see them being scanned there. It may take a while depending on how many plugins you have, but it will only happen once unless you've added extra plugins in the meantime. Mtron, Styrus, that's it, they're all scanned. So I am going to record some MIDI on track 1 to begin with. You can click on the plus icon to expand the timeline slightly and draw in a 4 bar loop. There you go. Click on the MIDI button here and under out left click and select new instrument. I'm going to select Jam Sticks 2 as my drum playback module. Select simple audio and MIDI together on the same track routing. Click OK. I'm going to use Jamsticks as a drum module, so I'll quickly load a kit. Let me see. Funk, that should do. That's good. Make sure it's working. 
I'm using my keyboard to trigger this. We're going to need a click for playing against. So right click here where it says click. And we need to select active while record and the pre-count measure of one bar should be fine. It's probably worth setting the MIDI to overdub in case you do more than one pass when you're recording. And finally left click where it says R to enable record for that track. Also I'm going to name that track drums. Now we're ready to do some recording so press the record button on the transport bar. some hi-hats on the second pass. Click yes if you think that was okay. I'm afraid my timing wasn't very good there so I'm going to go to MIDI and select MIDI start quantization. Quantizing the part has tightened it up. So that's a bit of drums recorded so I'm going to select the second track and click on the MIDI tab again and open the B4 organ emulation. That should do. Enable record on the second track and disable record on the first. Click the record button on the transport bar. should do. Left click to select the MIDI track and then go to the MIDI menu and select MIDI start quantization. It's really a case of using your own discretion when it comes to quantizing. So that's a bit of organ recorded so that should do for now. So I've done some MIDI now I'm going to record some live bass guitar audio. Click on track 3 and from the audio input menu, I want to select input 1, mono in. I'll quickly rename this track bass. Left click on the record button. That seems to be working. I'm going to extend the MIDI parts to 8 bars, so you can left click and lasso select the parts, then press Ctrl D to duplicate the parts, then expand the range or loop area. So that gives me a bit more to play over. So that's the bass recorded. You may want to import a audio loop or something, so click on the Manager tab and go to the File Browser. I'm going to import a Liquid Groove percussion loop. You can click on the arrow button here to audition the sound. When you've found something you're happy with, you can drag and drop it into the VIP and onto an empty track. Clicking on the clock icon selects Pitch Shift and Time Stretch Mode. This allows you to change the speed of the loop to match the tempo of the song. Control D duplicates it, remember? That seems to work okay. So there you are, just a few pointers to get you up and running and recording audio and MIDI in Samplitude. So until next time, goodbye for now.